Hello again, folks. This is Mike com coming back at you with another video on Foundations of Math 2. In the previous video, we talked about quadratic functions and got a little bit of an introduction into exponential functions. In this video, we're going to continue talking about exponential functions uh, and talk about another function that is uh, related to it. So, we got introduced to the um, exponential function. We saw what the thing looked like, but now where do we use this thing? Well, the exponential function actually has a lot of real life uh, uses. Um, we'll mention a few of them in uh, this video, uh, but for starters, just a couple quick samples here. Uh, you can use an exponential function uh, to model the growth of a population of say, um, a culture of uh, bacteria or um, plankton uh, or even human populations to a, a certain point. Uh, so modeling population growth is one use, uh, but perhaps the more commonly seen uh, application and the one that we all care on more because it has to do with money uh, is calculating the interest that we get uh, on some kind of um, investment uh, or the interest we get inside of our savings accounts. So in particular, uh, with the example on calculating interest on an investment uh, or savings account, if you invest or put P dollars uh, into something, as we said, savings account, other investment, whatever, uh, and if this thing pays you an annual interest rate R, which we're going to use in decimal form, not percentage. Uh, and interest is compounded or calculated n times per year. Then the value of your account or whatever you put your money into uh, after t years uh, is given by the following formula. It's p times the quantity 1 plus r over n raised to the power n times t. So let's just uh, see a quick sample uh, as to how this formula uh, gets used. So if $10,000 is going to be deposited into an account that has an annual interest rate of 4% and interest is compounded uh, monthly, uh, what is the account balance going to be after five years? Well, that's sort of uh, identify some of the key pieces of information that we need. We need our p-value, our r-value, uh, and then our n-value. p is how much we put into us in to start with. Uh, it says we are depositing ten thousand dollars, so that's going to be my p-value there. p is going to be ten thousand. Uh, my annual interest rate r. We use this as a decimal, so this is going to be 0 0.04, not 4%, or not 4. We're using this as 0 0.04. And then N is the number of times interest is compounded per year. We're told that the interest is compounded each month. Uh, there's 12 months in a year, so N is going to equal 12. So our model here is going to be P, 10,000, times 1 plus my R value, 0 0.04 divided by 12, raised it to the power N times T, or 12T. And we want to know what this account balance is going to be after five years. T is always measured in years, uh, so it's going to be 10,000 times, if you do 0 0.04 divided by 12 uh, and you add on 1, you're going to get approximately 1.003, and then we have 12 times 5, or 60. Sixty, not sixteen. So if I do one point zero zero three raised to the power of sixty, I'm going to get approximately uh, one point one nine 
six eight nine. And if I take this and I multiply by 10,000, I'm going to get 11,000. Nine hundred sixty-eight dollars and ninety cents. So that's what our account balance uh, is going to be after five years. This is assuming that we don't take any money out uh, and we don't add in any other uh, money into this uh, particular savings account here. Just as a quick side note. Uh, if you can find a bank that will give you an annual interest rate of 4% on the money you uh, put into it, definitely take it because you're going to make a lot of money. Uh, and I want to know what bank is offering you an interest rate of 4%. And I'm putting all my money in that bank too. Uh, nowadays, annual interest rates on banks are a fraction, a tiny fraction of 1%. Uh, so 4%, incredibly generous. If you find that, let me know. But this was just a sample problem showing how we uh, use uh, an exponential function uh, to solve a real world um, application. But sometimes we want to know, um, you know, after how long, after how many years will our account balance, say, hit some a particular uh, value. Uh, like say for this same problem here, uh, how long would it be before uh, our account balance say hit $20,000 or 30,000 or 50,000? Um, so we want to solve for the T value here. We want to solve uh, for this thing here. We want to solve for the variable that's now in the exponent, uh, not in the base. So how do we do that? Well, we need to first ask ourselves, is there a way that we can sort of undo uh, an exponential function? The answer is yes. Uh, and we do it with what's known as a logarithm. The logarithm with base A uh, is what's going to undo the exponential function A raised uh, to the power of X. And what, what that means mathematically is this guy right here. If you take log base A of A to the power X, you're just going to get that exponent. You're just going to get that X value. So taking the logarithm with the same base as the base of your uh, exponential function here that is just going to leave you then with the exponent. Uh, so just a couple quick samples here. Uh, log base 3 of 3 to the x equals x. Uh, or log base 1 half of 1 half uh, to the power x. You know, that is going to equal x. The base of our logarithm and the base of the exponent have to be the same thing. And when those are the same thing, then you're just left with your exponent. Okay, so great. That tells us that we can undo uh, this uh, logarithm, but then that means that we're going to be left with the logarithm of some number of some other number uh, and how do we necessarily come up with a numerical representation for that? How do we get that into something that we can actually work with and come up with an actual decimal for it? Well, we're going to need the following formula uh, to help come up with an actual value uh, for the uh, x value here that was in the exponent of our exponential function. We're going to use this formula here. Log base A of the quantity B is the same thing as log of B divided by log of A. Now this formula or this fact actually does have uh, its own name. It's called the change of base property. I'm not going to go into too much detail with it otherwise, 
but nonetheless it is called the a change of base property. Um, and the reason that I say, or we say it's log B uh, divided by log A is because if you take a look on your calculator that you can use uh, for this class, on the left hand side, you're going to see a button that looks like LOG. You would hit that button, you'd then type in your B value or your B quantity, and you would then hit enter, and you can come up with an actual decimal for log of B. Same kind of thing for log of A, and then you take the quotient and you have a decimal representation. So let's see how we use all these things uh, to solve a similar kind of problem. So suppose the account balance of yours at any time t is given by the following formula. 20,000 times the number 1.007 raised to the power of 6t. After how many years will your balance hit $100,000? Uh, round your answer to the nearest uh, year. So this sounds exactly like what we said just a little bit uh, back, where maybe we want to figure out uh, after how long will our balance hit some certain number? Well, in this case, that certain number, I want to know when this is going to equal 100,000. So 100,000 equals 20,000 times 1.007 raised to the power 16. Now, how do we go about solving problems like this? First thing you have to do, you always, 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 always have to do this. You have to divide each side by that number that's in front of your base. I need to divide both sides by 20,000 first. And 100,000 divided by 20,000 gives me 5. So this is going to equal 1.007 to the power 16. Okay, now once you have it as some number equals some other number raised to some power, now we're going to bring in that logarithm. Now we are going to undo the uh, the um, exponential that we have on the right hand side of our equal sign. And when you undo it, you're taking the logarithm with the same base as what you have in your exponential. And you're taking that logarithm of both sides. So log base 1.007 of 5 is going to equal log base 1.007 of 1.007 to the power 6t. And as we mentioned earlier, when you have the same base on your logarithm as you have the same base in your exponent, or in your um, exponential function, I should say, you're just left with the exponent that you had in there. So plugging this in, log base 1.007 of 1.007 to the power 6t is just going to give me that exponent of 6t. So I'm almost there. I'm almost done. I just have to divide uh, both sides by 6. So I have log base 1.007 of 5, all divided by 6. And you can rewrite this as 1 sixth times log base 1.007 of 5, 
And using that change of base property here, this is 1 6 times log of 5 divided by log of 1.007. And when you plug this into your calculator and you get all your calculations done and you round it to the nearest whole year or the nearest whole number, you will get approximately 38 years. So it's going to take approximately 38 years uh, for this particular um, savings account or whatever kind of thing you have here. Uh, it'll take about 38 years uh, to hit $100,000. So if I had to put this into some kind of process here, uh, how do we solve problems of uh, this kind? Uh, you are going to start by dividing both sides by the number in front of your exponential function. This is your exponential there, divide both sides by the number in front of it. Then you're going to undo uh, that exponential by taking the logarithm of both sides. The base on your logarithm is going to be the same base as the one you have for your exponential. When you do that, where you have your exponential function, you now just have the exponent of it. You just have that power. And then you would do perhaps one more step, uh, and you would um, divide both sides by the proper constant uh, to solve for your t value. And then use that change of base property, that change of base fact, uh, to calculate your logarithm, and then come up with your answer. So let's go on to another sample problem here. Uh, this one is on another uh, real-world application of uh, exponential functions. Uh, this one has to do with radioactive decay and uh, carbon dating. Uh, some of us may be a bit more familiar uh, with the concept of radioactive decay and uh, carbon dating. Uh, there are radioactive isotopes uh, of uh, some of our basic um, elements out there. Uh, and these things can be used uh, to figure out how old something is that's been uh, found uh, buried underground for years and years and years uh, and years. Uh, it involves something called the half-life. The half-life is the amount of time it takes for half of a particular radioactive substance or radioactive isotope uh, to break down uh, half of uh, the quantity that it had. So let's take a look at this uh, second problem here. Uh, the amount of carbon-14 that's left in a wooden plate after t centuries is given by the function f of t equals a naught times 2.5 raised to the power uh, negative 0.0024t. Uh, and this a naught here, this is the starting quantity of carbon-14 that was in the uh, object. When scientists uh, find the object, they find that there is 55% uh, of the uh, starting amount of carbon-14 in the object. How old is this object? How old is uh, this plate? Now, the first thing that may stand out to you here uh, is that we have this A naught here, uh, and it's may be very tricky, uh, if remotely clear at all, as to how we would uh, progress uh, with solving it, this problem. Because you may be thinking, okay, what's this a not value? We need something here uh, for what the heck this guy is. But the thing is, we actually don't. Uh, I'm going to help you get this problem started, and then once we get it started, I want you uh, to try to figure this guy out uh, the rest of the way. So our model is a naught times 2.5 raised to the power negative 0.0024t. We're told that at the time that scientists or whoever finds 
this plate, uh, there is 55% of the uh, starting amount of carbon-14 uh, in the object. So that right there gives us a piece of information that we need. That right there says that for whatever T value that we're trying to find, the amount of carbon-14 that's going to be left in there, namely F, is going to equal 55% or 0.55 times my starting quantity. What was my starting quantity? A naught. So that is going to equal 0.55 A naught. Now, let's start going through that process like we did with our uh, previous problem. I'm going to divide both sides by the number that's in front of my exponential function. There's the exponential, here's the number in front. I'm going to divide both sides by that A naught. And what that's going to do is that it's going to cancel out the A naughts from both sides. And we're just going to be left with 0.55 is equal to 2.5 to the power of negative 0.0024t. And now, this is in a form uh, that we know how to work with from our uh, previous problem. We know how to undo this um, exponential here. We know how to solve for our t value. So I'm going to challenge you guys now, uh, pause the video here, and try to solve through this problem on your own. Try to figure out what your T value is uh, going to be. Uh, and once again, uh, round your T value to the nearest whole number. So press pause, try to solve it. Once you think you have the answer, press play, and we'll see if you were correct. All right, guys, so let's see if you came up uh, with the correct answer. Uh, so from here, you want to take the logarithm of both sides, uh, and in this case, the base on your logarithm is going to be 2.5. So when you do that, you get log base 2.5 of 0.55 equals log base 2.5 of 2.5 to the power negative 0.0024t, and that just gives me negative 0.0024t. Lastly, to solve for t, divide both sides by that negative 0.0024. And when you do that, and when you use your change of base property, you should have come up with approximately 272 years. So guys, there you go. Those are just a couple sample problems uh, to see how we undo uh, an exponential function with a logarithm. And this is really all I want to show you uh, in regards to exponential and logarithmic uh, functions. You don't need to know all the fine properties, uh, really just the general idea uh, uh, of being able to know how you undo uh, an exponential with a, a logarithm uh, and being able to uh, pro solve problems similar to these uh, using it, those methods, uh, that is plenty uh, to know. So if you have questions or comments, guys, please be sure to reach out to me, send me emails, uh, send me texts, knock on my door, uh, throw the bat signal up in the air, whatever you have to do. Otherwise, until the next video, Take it easy, guys.